What's good, everybody? It's your man, DL Saint. Time for a DL Short. So, um, we all know everything is going on right now with the banking and the financial sector of America is all, is all crazy right now. It's also getting crazy in Europe and the rest of the world. Um, so, I was out kind of doing research, looking at different videos, and this video popped up. Nothing to do with banking or anything like that. This has to do with air traffic control. They want to privatize air traffic control in America. In this video, that's what they're talking about. And this is John Stossel. Don't know who he is, um, but I think he's been on Tim Pool, probably been on Fox. So probably someone who sits a little bit, you know, to the right. Again, I don't know who this, this guy is, but he's talking about air traffic control. And as you know, uh, I did over 25 years in the business. I'm a retired air traffic controller. I was with the FAA. And before that, I was with the United States Army as a tactical air traffic controller, part of a tact team. Our job was to jump behind enemy lines and set up some uh, devices that would allow our helicopters to uh, close on their targets and do what they have to do. Uh, we would set up non-directional beacons. That mission is over and, um, you know, the, the, the Army moves differently now. But back in 1990, that's what I did. So let's get into this. Watch this video. They're talking about air traffic control and privatizing air traffic control. And, uh, yeah, I got some thoughts on it. Founding of all flights. America's air travel was paralyzed this winter. Tens of thousands of passengers were left confused and frustrated. Why? Because of a government computer failure. There were problems with the notice to air mission system. Okay, computers sometimes fail, but last year, one in five American flights was delayed. Often because our flight control technology is lousy. Why is it cut? It's not exactly true. Most delays are due to the airlines. They just blame air traffic control, right? A lot of delays are due to the airlines, right? A lot of delays are due to weather and congestion. We don't control mother nature. Be nice if we did, but we don't. So when there's storms and there are things of that nature, it backs the system up. And there will be delays because... Uh, there are people in the FAA in the air traffic space that are called traffic managers. And what they do is they sit back and they watch all of the airports in America. They look at weather trends. They look at volume and they delay departures. So it will be a it will it wouldn't be such a burden on the system. If they just let them all go, they can see that, oh, if we do this three hours from now, Atlanta is going to be working at. 300% over capacity. Miami will be a 500% other over capacity. LAX will be a thousand percent over capacity. You see, if they just let, let it go, that, that's what would happen. So there are people, air traffic controllers who do traffic management and they look at it and it's computer uh, systems. They help them do this and they have these models that they look at and they're like, oh, so if I just move these departures back a couple of hours, that'll keep the flow moving good in Las Vegas or at Dallas or at New York, LaGuardia. And that's what they do. Traffic management does a great job and they work really hard, especially on the East Coast when there's weather. So yeah, the majority of delays that they're talking about comes from the airliners, the airlines themselves overbooking flights, not having aircraft there, this, that, and the third. So that's the first thing. Let's continue so often on the cutting edge of innovation, stuck in the dark ages when it comes to air travel. Because our air traffic control is run by the federal government. Is the system out of date? Well, the system is continuously being upgraded and improved, but I think that is one of the key questions that, uh, uh, that we have to look at. But the government's been looking at it for decades. The so is the system out of date? Yes. I mean, technology evolves so fast that it's hard for any one entity or any one, you know, government to keep up. There's always going to be cutting edge technology out there. Do you want to invest to get that system? And by the time you implement that system and it gets up to speed, it's already outdated. Do you want to do that? The American government has done that more than once. And they're about to talk about that now. So, yes, our system is outdated. However... That's not a real issue. A first promise modernization in the 80s. Then they promised a computer upgrade called NextGen. 
Next gen will enhance safety, shave minutes off flight times. But next gen hasn't happened either. The FAA won't say when it might be done. American air traffic control is a lot like it was in the 1960s. Where is your plane? The information was put on flight progress trips that indicate the route, altitude, and other important flight data. In America, these strips of paper still keep track of flights. Computer printouts of individual flights that air traffic controllers can then manually move around. Printouts, they move manually. We are making they're trying to make it a big deal. Oh, you use paper strips to, to track airplanes? Yeah, I've worked in facilities that use strips. I've worked in facilities that don't use strips. Normally, I'll have a, a, a pad of paper next to me, and I'll jot down my own notes as to what's going on. It depends on the type of air traffic that you are moving and where you are working. Are you working in route? Are you working TRACON? Right? Which is, or are you working in a tower? Right? So... And Tracon is terminal approach, uh, so like approach control. Are you which 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 level are you working? Right. So the fact that we use some people use strips that means nothing, bro. It's like oh, you're using a pencil. Pencil. There's a stylus out now. You why are you using pencils? Because the pencils work. All right. Effort to modernize and look at our procedures. Why does it take them so long? This is you of government at work. Diana first got Roth worked for the transportation department during the last administration. Air traffic control is in your department. You could have fixed it. You should have fixed it. I have control over a small portion of DOT budget. A billion dollars of it, but. I was not allowed to take that money, give it to my friend over at the FAA and say, Dan, there's five million towards your new computer system. And no one else was allowed to do it either. Government managers have little flexibility. They must fund specific projects pushed by politicians. Facts. Facts. They're not lying. That's how that works. Right? How do we get around that? We talked about that. We got to fix the politicians. They earmark stuff all the time. He ain't lying about that part that benefit rural, suburban, tribal, and urban communities. Sounds like they mean well. Sounds a lot better to talk about social justice, nuts and bolts, like computer hardware for the air traffic control gets left behind. Computer hardware isn't left behind in Canada. We have been shaping air navigation with groundbreaking solutions. Decades ago, Canada turned air traffic control over to a private company. They got rid of the paper flight strips we still use. You won't find them in the tower in Vancouver. They're all electronic. See how this one? He's not lying about it, but here's the thing. Let me let you in on a little secret about Canada and their air traffic control system versus America and our air traffic control system, right? In America, you're free to learn how to fly and go fly around anyway. You can do that in America. Go get your Cessna or your Sirius or your Cherokee or your Mooney or whatever you want to get in and go fly. Right? If you live in Tampa, you can go get into your airplane. You can get into your Malibu and fly to L.A. It'll take you a couple days, but you can do it. You can't do that in Canada. You can't do that nowhere in Europe that I'm aware of. You can't do that in Asia. Only in America. So what does that mean? Canada doesn't run nearly the amount of air traffic that we run here in America. The virtual strip that they're showing you there... Yeah, it works great for them. But here in America, there are so many airplanes right now in the national airspace system in the NASA that are just flying around. There's guys out there, women out there in their airplanes just flying around. It's uncontrolled airspace. They're everywhere. And if they get into some situation and they need help from air traffic, they can just call. Right? They run a privatized air traffic control system. That's great. But they have all sorts of issues. Privatization is not the end all to be all people and it will cost more money to the user and you will get less service. That's just how it works. This is just a better way to track flights. It's not just Canada that does it. Dozens of countries have now privatized or partially privatized. All those countries you see right there have no freedom. America still has freedom. They're trying to restrict, uh, you know, freedom of flight in this country. They're trying to, and this would be a good way to do it. Privatize air traffic control. 
Then the system gets underwater and they can't handle it. Now, okay, no one can fly. You will lose the freedom to learn to be a pilot and go out and just fly around in your airplane or your ultralight. There are a whole, there are a whole lot of home-built experimental airplanes out there. In America, you can build an airplane, get it certified by the government inspectors and go fly it. That's a, that is so much freedom. That's amazing. You can't do that in those countries that are listed up there. You're not doing that in South America. You're not doing that in the UK. You're not doing that in Canada. You know what I mean? You're not doing that in Colombia. You're not doing that in France. All the people who live in those countries that love aviation, where do they go to learn how to fly and get their certifications? They come here to America because it's cheaper and they have more freedom. I can't tell you how many times we would get Japanese flight instructors coming over from Japan, learning how to get multi-engine certifications and stuff like that so they can go back to Japan and fly jets. If you make America like the rest of these countries, we're going to run out of jet pilots. I tell you that right now. You're going to run out of experienced aviators. And they innovate. No longer do traffic controllers squint through binoculars. Many aren't even at the airport. Since 2018, the International Airport at Saarbrücken has been remotely controlled from the remote tower center in Leipzig. Those things that look like windows, they're digital monitors. I use my binoculars, but I enjoy that the zoom cameras have different zoom settings I can use, which the binoculars didn't have. But I can see the aircraft also during that time and a lot clearer than before on the real tower. A government. That's all well and good. You want you have a virtual room where you can control airplanes while well, I can be sitting here in Tampa controlling airplanes out in Phoenix, Arizona. Right. OK, that's fine. But what happens when the system goes down? What happens when there's a, a hurricane and we have to leave? What happens when there's an earthquake and we have to leave? What happens when there's a wildfire and you have to leave? The whole it, it doesn't work. When I was working at the smaller airports, I was working at Van Nuys Airport. One of the busiest general aviation airports on the planet has always been. I worked there in this heyday. A slow, a slow session for us. I mean, a very slow period. I might have 20 airplanes in the sky. There might be another 50 airplanes taxiing around. There might be another 15 or 20 airplanes looking to uh, get their flight plans and all that stuff. Right. That's a slow session. You need binoculars to look out the window and find these airplanes because you need to see the airplanes with your eyes to make sure everything is okay. Right? You you technology is not at a point where it is flawless. So many times in my business, airplanes are calling and say, hey, we're 15 miles north of your airport. When they're really 35 miles east of the airport. Radar is good to help us find these people because they're lost. But you're gonna if the radar goes down, all you have are binoculars in your radio, you still gotta figure it out, you still gotta get the job done. So automation is not the, the answer, not by itself. You're always gonna need someone standing there at that airport looking out the window, finding the airplane. He found that in countries that privatized, safety stayed the same or improved, costs were lower, and there were fewer delays. What well, Safety stayed the same because, or improved because they wouldn't let airplanes fly. When you privatize the system, they shut down the use. They'll say, oh, we, we can only have X amount of airplanes. Right? And they also, they, they charge you per use. If they could, they would charge you for every transmission you made. They'll charge you for taxiing and out. They'll charge you for, for using the system. That's what happens with the privatized air traffic control system. That's where the money comes from. They charge the user. And what happens? People are like, ah, it's so expensive, I can't fly anymore. Gas is expensive. Insurance is expensive. Instruction is, is very expensive. And now you're going to tack on all these other fees to learn how to fly and just to be able to, have, to utilize that freedom. That's why their safety remained saved or improved because they had less airplanes. Their costs were lower because they were charging the users. And they would use less controllers. The government has to have more than enough controllers available at any given facility. They have to, by law. You can't just send people home because there's no airplanes flying around, like a fireman. Right? You can't have, okay, well, I know we're supposed to have 10 firemen here, but uh, there's no one 
report any fires, so we're going to send six of y'all home. You can't do that. You have to sit there. The controllers have to be there. You never know when something's going to go bad. And fewer or shorter delays, yeah. If you got less people using the system, if you, re if you don't allow people to fly, you're going to get less delays. That's how it works. New tower enables us to do is manage our airspace more efficiently and safer. So why doesn't America do that? Because our government's dominated by crotchety old politicians who don't like privatization and don't seem to understand technology. They talk about the paper strips. They use paper strips in the traffic control towers. Well, yeah, we do. It works real well. Such politicians partner with labor unions. We are the AFLs. Yeah, I know I'm 100% labor. And if it weren't for the unions, you wouldn't have air traffic controllers right now. They would all quit. It wouldn't be worth it. They pay air traffic controllers a really good salary, and a lot of air traffic controllers can't wait to retire. They're leaving at record numbers right now because they see the writing on the wall. It's a problem. When you have a you have a job that pays hundreds of thousands of dollars a year, and the people are like, I'm good, I'm gonna retire. I don't want to be a part of this system anymore, but that's a conversation for another day. And unions do what unions do. They advocate for keeping the same people in the same jobs. Because some jobs would go away under this better system. Some jobs would go away, but other, others might open up. All these people fight change. And so on. And there's some truth to that. She said... Others' jobs may open up. There's a little bit of truth to that. But the, the fact remains that there are more jobs in management where people are just sitting in positions making money doing nothing than there is on the union side. Members of the National Air Traffic Controllers Association, they're, the air traffic controllers, they work. They go on position. They actually talk to airplanes. They're actually doing the job. Managers don't. And they consider frontline supervisors managers. And the frontline supervisor is supposed to be the person who actually knows how to move the airplanes. They, they control airplanes as well. They don't know what they're doing. They don't have to be proficient anymore. It's not the best. It used to be the best controllers were going to be the supervisors. That's not the case anymore. And again, that's another conversation as to why that happened. So we're not going to watch the rest of this. But they're just making a case that if we were to privatize the American air traffic control system, that things would be so much better. I would argue it would not get better. It would not get better at all. It would get better for uh, the airlines, for the air carriers, because they would get all of the attention. But all of the freedom and flying for, for the people who just love aviation and for the people, the majority of the people who use the system, it would get a lot worse. They won't, they will not be able to just jump in the airplane and go fly around anymore. They will get, they will get charged out of aviation. The fees will be so heavy that they wouldn't be able to fly anymore. And if that happens, then we lose our pilots of the future because our pilots today can't learn. Right now, if you're 15, 16 years old, you can learn how to fly. You can get a pilot's license before you can get your driver's license and you can fly around the world. That will go away. So privatization of air traffic control is not the answer. Maybe some sort of hybrid where you privatize some aspects of air traffic control. Maybe you, you, you privatize some of the slower, lower facilities. You know what I mean? That's a conversation. But if you do that, then you, you lose your pool of air traffic controllers who can move up and work the, the, the more difficult, more complex traffic. I don't know. It's not an easy problem. People want easy, easy solutions. Everyone wants a very easy solution to a very complex problem. Well, air traffic control in America is a very complex problem. I don't know of any easy solutions. Privatization is just not it. All right. I'm done. I'm DL Saint, y'all. And I'm done with that. I'm DL Saint. We're going to talk about air traffic control later on in life. <laughs> you know what I mean? Trust me. I'll probably do a whole episode on it. Get some of my friends uh, who have recently retired and maybe some who are still working. And we can talk about what's going on with the system. I uh, hope y'all enjoyed that. Uh, if you got any questions, any concerns, any comments, leave them down below. I will address them. It might take me a week or so, but I will get to them. Thanks for rocking out with me. I'm going to holler at y'all later. Peace.